everybody. Glad to be back. It's a gorgeous day here in Northport. Um, I'm on the beach and um, just soaking up this beautiful sun. Uh, it's not sunny right here, but um, I'm going to pan over here and show you what I have working on today. I'm going to do that scene. It's really pretty out. <laughs> hey, Allie! <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I had a few questions about um, my whole setup here and I thought that I would just take a few minutes and um, just take my camera off the stand and kind of show you what I'm doing. Uh, some people are wanting to do their own videos so I'm going to just show you what I do here. So this is um, this is my whole plein air easel and I know I've showed you this before. This is um, by James Coulter and it, it's in different components. So this is the one component right here, this tall thing. And then I have a tripod here and then the palette box. And um, and then to do these films, these little videos, hi guys, thanks for joining. Uh, I have a separate, um, let me see if I can do it this way. This is my tripod here that I put my little camera on. Hi Teresa. And then you can go to Best Buy and buy one of these little thingies for about $15. It holds your phone. And um, so that's really all you need. I also, uh, since I have run out of battery in the past, bought a little um, charger thing that I can plug into my phone if it starts getting low. All right, so that's kind of what I do to get set up on one of these things, these live feeds, or real, any video. Um, at home in my studio, I'll just use my plein air easel and put my little camera on this, and then I just go. If you have an iPhone, I use an app called iMovie. And it puts, you just click on the little video clips that you've made and you can just put them all together in that one little app. And that's how I make my little movies. So jumping in, um, I, I've already um, done a little bit of a painting this morning and then I also did a little bit of a, um, a thumbnail sketch and I wanted to show you that I kind of worked out some of my problems. Um, it is not 70 degrees today. <laughs> kind of a little bit cold right now, but that's okay. Um, so some of these that I worked out, I have, um, like for, I'll just show you what I did. This is the one I'm going to go with. Um, I liked the composition better. And, hi, David. Um, and that's the, I'll show you the little one that I finished already. Um, but I also tried to thought maybe I could zoom in on the scene a little bit, but I found that this design shoots you off the canvas over here and off the canvas this way. And it, it just wasn't working for me. Um, same kind of concept with this one. I liked it was a little more um, zoomed in on the scene over there, but the water is such a pretty color today that I kind of want to just focus more on, on just all the colors that I'm seeing in here, and, and that's my concept for today. So I keep my uh, thumbnail sketch right here, and I just have um, a linen panel. It's 8 by 10 today. And then um, I don't know if you want to see the colors again on my palette. I just used the same ones that I've been using, but I'll just tell you real quick. It's the Titanium White, Naples Yellow, Cad Yellow Pale, Yellow Ochre, Cad Red Medium, and Burnt Sienna. Those are all my warm tones. And then my cooler colors are the Ultramarine Blue and um, Alizarin Permanent and Thalo Green. I threw on some uh, Cobalt Blue. When I was here yesterday, I was looking at the colors of the water and I thought, you know, gosh, that's almost just a little bit cobalt mixed with some white. So I threw it on today just to see. Okay. So jumping in, um, just going to take some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and turn this so you can see it. Okay. Using the thumbnail sketch down here, I'm going to just refer to it and go on here and work out my drawing. thinking too about uh, dividing it up. <laughs> Thanks Roger. Thinking about dividing it in two thirds like I kind of do all the time but I want um, the water to and all, all the way down to be more than the larger part, the two thirds part. And so the land is going to come up this way and I want the trees in here. This is the same scene that I did um, a couple weeks ago. I did a beach whatever but I was much further down that way. 
and it was a totally different sky. Everything was different. When I did my little practice painting this morning, um, what I really enjoyed about it was just zooming in on this passage in here. So I decided I'm just going to focus my attention on this area here. Thanks for signing on or joining, guys. So, kind of just a quick laying it in. Nothing really committed. The center of focus is going to be in this area, so I'm just kind of focusing my attention on that right now. And there's a few fall color trees up here that I think would be interesting. I'm just going to put a just a general tone over this, a value, just to kind of map out where my values are. I squint down at it just to get a better um, perspective of the relationship between that and the sky. The sky is going to be my lightest value, and then the sand here is going to be next. So this is all going to be water, and I like how the water, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it kind of tucks around behind that little point of this island, or peninsula, or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, I wanted to tell you. Before I get, before I forget, I'm not going to go live next Friday, but I've already made a video for next Friday to share. Um, I did a still life with some roses, and so I'll put that on next Friday. That's my horizon way over there. And there's the land as it comes out like that. I hope everybody has wonderful plans for Thanksgiving. It's my favorite. All right, um, kind of happy with that. So I think what I'm going to do is just start now with the sky and move forward. So using a lot of white, um, a lot of ultramarine blue, well not as much, and then. I'm not going to use as much of the um, Gamsol anymore, just since I'm jumping right into color. So um, last week I talked about the dome effect on the sky, and even though I don't have very much of the sky in my little spectrum here, I'm going to just do a little bit of it. So I have that uh, periwinkle, um, kind of violet blue right at the top here. oil on there. Like that. Okay. I thought we were all coming to your house. <laughs> I am messing myself. Oh, yeah. You know, um, I do hold the brush loose uh, and, and oftentimes it'll fly out of my hand. <laughs> but yeah. Now it's important to keep it loose too. Um, if, if you start holding it tight and getting in here and, and getting real precious with it, um, it just doesn't have that fresh feeling anymore. Does you? I'm still working on our plants. Oh, <laughs> okay. Good. And then, um, so as the light, or as the sky comes down towards the horizon again, um, you're going to add more. It'll be warmer, lighter down there. And um, get some more oil in there. So really only just the top portion of my painting here has that violet blue effect. And then um, as I move down, just lightening it. I'm looking at the horizon over here where the trees and the sky meet. And it's pretty warm up there. Warm as in um, having a lot more of that yellow tone with it. water is so relaxing. My daughter told me that my little videos are like ASMR. 
the, um, I forget what that stands for, but it, it's that stuff that puts you to sleep. <laughs> so don't fall asleep. Are you using, um, these are oil paints. I'm just going to kind of paint over the top of those trees that I started putting in over there. Yeah, not too much. I kind of just want to see them a little bit, but not the sound of the water. It is. It's really peaceful. I love it over here. I got here like two hours early. Um, I had a migraine this morning, so I thought just being out here and absorbing the sound would just help. And it really did. It helped. Feeling better. Um, as I get down here, right towards the horizon, I'm going to add a little bit of Naples yellow into that almost just white mixture because I look over there and it's sort of that almost peachy rosy tone. So I'm going to do that. Might even just do a touch of the alizarin in there. It looks pretty. I hope that you're able to see the canvas a little better. Last uh, last week, I just I felt like such a disaster. <laughs> Hot. It's cold. I don't know what it is here in the shade. It must be about 40 or something. Thanks, Lorraine. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like that. Um, it's going to blend out a little bit. feels good. <laughs> now I'm going to get that piece of lavender um, earth over there, land. Um, it's just, I'm just going to use the ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, um, throw in some yellow ochre, and then I'm going to add some Naples yellow just to cool it, lighten it a little bit. too dark. What do you use to transport? Oh, I'll show you. Um, okay, so this is a box I bought from Raymar. Um, you can get them all different sizes, but I, I bought an 8x10. I really like it because most of what I do is either 6x8 or 8x10 and you can, um, they have little slots you slide them in, right like that. Um, if I do something bigger than this, like sometimes I go out and I do an 11 by 14 I will just leave it right on this thing here like this and just carry that back to the car and lay it flat. I th think I'm still going to order an 11 by 14 You can, you know, you can make them or whatever. Um, I like that 11 by 14 too because it fits right in my backpack. Or I'm sorry, the 8 by 10. So I'm just trying to get some of those distant colors way over there. <laughs> Hide and see you start. Oh, what did I miss? <laughs> Thanks, Jean Marie. Um, well, everything. I'm all done. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, I just talked about, um, I took the camera off and I showed the tripod and just the different things that I use. You can just watch the beginning um, when, when it's all done. All right, thank you, John. So uh, just, I look over there and I see a little bit more alizarin in those distant hills. And, 
um, I just try to make every part of the painting beautiful. I want to make sure that there isn't one facet on there that um, I don't feel good about those brush strokes, and just to keep it, you know, satisfactory. <laughs> and then where this uh, piece of land tucks in over there, um, I added a little bit more blue. Oh, fully. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I just talked about the tripod that this is sitting on and the little clamp and then um, just this. I didn't, I don't know um, as far as, you had asked a question right before I got started um, about the different clamps, I think, for the easel. And all that I use for my plein air is um, the James Coulter easel. And um, I don't know what you paid for the metal one of the picture you sent to me, but I think this whole setup with the tripod, the clamp, and the palette was like 300 and something. But you could you could Google them and check. Good morning, Pe uh, Ken. Looks like a great day. It is a great day. Thank you. I'm shivering, but I'm okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm happy with that. I'm going to do some of the water as it comes around this way, and then I'll go back and do the, the um, land. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Nice day, right? It's gorgeous, yeah. So, um, this water is just I've got um, ultramarine blue, a little bit of yellow ochre, great, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and just some white. Not, I'm not using the cobalt yet. In fact, all I'm going to really do with the cobalt blue is just a few little accent pieces in the top of the water over here. darker value here. Love painting water. Keep yourself warm <laughs> from migraine, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Colette. No, it, um, you know, cold isn't good for a migraine, and I'm not sure it was technically a, a migraine. Um, I got my uh, cancer treatment last night, so uh, it affects my brain. I don't know why, but I was just, I didn't sleep well, and so the ocean and just being out here in the fresh air I think helped. So anyway. So I'm looking and there's just this dark passage of water right here um, and then it just quickly fades to light and um, right over here. I want to get it too dark. I'm also using um, more oil because um, it's it's colder here in the shade and it helps to keep the paint looser. Yeah, I like that value. Right. Do you use a medium as in wet and wet or odd? Um, well, it is a dry canvas, um, but I do uh, just use the linseed oil. <laughs> See a mistake? There's probably a lot of mistakes. <laughs> the nice thing about um, admitting you're never perfect is, you know, <laughs> nobody expects it. Anyway. So, I want to try to capture this um, sunlit look in here. On, I think on my sample piece, I, I, here I'll show you. I was working on just at the end. This is the one I did before, and there's there are problems on this. But um, I thought that this angle here was too harsh, so I'm going to make sure that I alter that. And just before I stopped working on it, thank you, um, I was working on getting this look and feel of it being sunlit in here. So. 
It's like the, the finished cake on a cooking shelf. This is what we're gonna do today. That was a call. Okay, so thinking about this uh, hill over here, I am gonna shorten it a little bit than what I see over there because um, I'm gonna try to get in some of the rocks and things as they go on. I'll show you it again here if you wanna see that, that whole passage back that way. And then just to try to capture that sunlit effect, it's, um, you know, yellow ochre, cad yellow, a uh, little bit of Naples yellow. Just using a variety of my different yellows with a little bit of blue. Um, because I look over there and I see that kind of that dead grass stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I'm reserving my strongest lights for the top of the hill. And I see as it comes around into the shadow over here that I have more of the burnt sienna with the yellow ochre. Like that. And down here too. <laughs> Thanks for joining guys. Fun to have you here. It says my connection is weak. I hope I don't lose it. If I do, I'll move things around. <laughs> Let me check in. sun on top of this hill. It's an ochre with blue. Yeah, thank you, Jean Marie. Um, so, and then um, right here where the trees meet the sky, um, it's kind of just like a fuzzy, blurry edge. All right, Chris. But um, when doing that fuzzy blurry edge of the tree line, um, you just want to make sure that it has some nice uh, variety to it. Just to make it interesting. getting these little messages up here. Okay. Okay. So, working again then from the background forward. Thinking about this, there's this beautiful rock wall and how it comes around this way. I want to get that in because I want to start um, putting in the water up closer to it. Thank you for posting. So you're welcome, Charles. <laughs> Have a good day. Water. It's interesting, the tide's already started to come up. Don't pay that. <laughs> no. So, some of these little, um, this is a strong dark, and I want to put some of that up in the hill so it sort of isn't such a like this. So, 
put some of that just to add a little more balance. I want to make sure to, to make this value recede as it goes back. And it's, it's one of those tricky things. <laughs> it, it is so beautiful. I knew you would like this one, Anne. Um, as far as the value goes, um, sometimes if you focus, like if I focus on those rocks way over there, they're really dark, just as dark as the ones up close if I focus on all of those. Um, but you can't. Remember, I um, always look peripherally at those far away things and I will help gauge the value. So, um, even though I know those are dark, I'm going to paint them lighter. Just hit that a little bit brighter. On top. <laughs> You're gonna fall asleep, Allie. <laughs> it's really peaceful. Surprisingly, no seagulls today. They're way down there. Alright. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of uh, rosy tone because I see some of that up in these hills right here. Just adding um, some of that impressionistic variety of brushwork and color and tones. And, and when I look over there, I see them. So I'm kind of pushing that lavender effect a little bit more just to, to play with that. That's pretty. I have to say, it, 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 what the thing about plein air painting is, even if it doesn't look perfect, oh my goodness, you're out here, you're enjoying the, just being in nature and I love that. Yeah, I don't know how many of these I'm going to be able to do this season, though. Because I think we're going to quickly run out of nice weather. <laughs> so glad you can paint outside. Yeah! Thank you. Thanks, Anne. I am too. Um, next week I'll be in Minnesota. So um, I mentioned at the beginning that I won't be doing a live video feed next Friday, but I already made a video and um, I'll share that on Friday at noon. And um, it's painting a still life with roses. It's pretty. It's so different making a little video than um, doing one of these live ones. <laughs> I can I can do retakes when I drop brushes and stuff. Okay, getting in some of this water here now. I will come back in and add more accents to these rocks, but for now I'm just gonna soften this edge. Like that. I'm getting a lot more white. Might even take some of that cobalt and some oil just to streak the sun because I'm seeing some of these really pretty. Um, like that. You see that back there a little bit? Oh, hey, we're back on. Yay. <laughs> Never know with nature, right? Might not get a good cell reception. But we're back, so yay. Okay, so I'm going to try to get this done so that that doesn't happen again. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Okay, gonna work quickly so we don't lose it again. Um, I have some ultramarine blue and yellow ochre and I need some more white in there. still on. I'm checking, I'm checking. I don't want to keep painting and then have nobody there. Because <laughs> I have no cell reception. Okay. 
Okay. I want a lot more water in here. Um, I'm sorry, white with the blue. Hi, Renee. And some more yellow ochre uh, in there with that water. I think that that looks good. Yeah. And then this water line, I love how it, it has this, um, comes like this, and then is back this way and then there's some more of that violet in um, in the water here where it meets the sand so I'm gonna get some of that in there and I did put some more cobalt in this um, little mixture here just to help there's a different shade of uh, blue to that alizarin and just right into the mixture that I already have of the um, the blue in the water and get some of that purpley feel in there oh hey we're back it says the connections weak mm, trying Okay, um, what I did is I just took and I did a little bit of this darker kind of seaweed line where it meets the, the sand. I'm going to get some of that sand in real quick. Um, just, uh, just so I can get some color there. Kind of would like to have the whole canvas covered. And so I have a nice um, chiseled edge over here where the rocks and the sand meet. And then I'm going to keep my brushwork as horizontal as possible. Right in here. I think the Russians are hacking. <laughs> I know, I hope not. Thank you. Um, it's driving me crazy, this reception. I don't know what's happening, but um, trying to get it done. <laughs> so um, I just laid some of this down. This is um, Naples yellow. <laughs> We're back. Uh, um, just laying in some of the darker accents back here on the rocks. Uh, just like that. Pulling this down. <laughs> Getting some more blue in here. This is a nice darker tone up in here. Hope you can see that. I'll, I'll show you a picture when I'm all done of the whole thing, just so that you can, hopefully I can zoom in on it. So I'm also just taking some violet tones and just whooshing it across the sand over here without making it look too stripey because I don't want to, I don't want to have that look either. And then, um, since this was about water, I'm going to just focus on trying to get the water done instead of so much of the sand. Um, clean brush, I'm just using a size 6 today. Getting some of the white with the yellow ochre. And um, you can see that a uh, little bit. 
This is uh, just keeping my brush uh, work flat, long, low, um, soft little movements like that. Uh, during one of the breaks, <laughs> it uh, I did took some yellow ochre and a little bit of the um, cad yellow and some of the blue and got some of this watery, um, that's too much, this watery, like when a wave curls, it has sort of that greenish aqua -y look to it. So just trying to get some of that. The waves are really small today. Um, so thanks for joining and coming back, <laughs> everyone who is here. And then, um, we've been having a heck of a time with reception today, but I guess it comes with the territory. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> some nice uh, like shine from the sky on them so uh, like where the sand is wet I'm just gonna kind of give it a nice little like that okay now I'm gonna add the little white little tiny white caps or whatever the little foamy things along the water and I'm just taking some just some nice um, clean white I'm gonna start way back here I'm just kind of just gently letting the brush go skittering along the edge. I'm sorry I can't get it closer. I'm afraid to move the camera because I'll lose reception. But, um, so I just kind of am taking the edge of the brush. Looking at it to see where I see significant or interesting looking wave chunks. Just curling the brush. Hey, thanks for sharing the video, guys. I appreciate that. There really isn't much more for the little white cappy things over here, so um, I'm just going to kind of leave those. thought that um, this green color that I had in here was a little too intense, so I'm just kind of toning it down a little bit. <laughs> so peaceful out. good cell reception now. Okay, so I'm um, going to get some more of that violet. That um, I say violet, I just mean uh, lizard crimson and um, ultramarine blue. And then I'm mixing a little bit of um, white, yellow ochre. <laughs> Thank you. Just where I see some of these just right down in here. I think that looks really pretty, the, the purple here. Right on. Okay, and then um, you're gonna pull some of that seaweed shoreline thing out that I lost. And that's just um, you know, some yellow ochre. back in here.
Gotta step back and see it real quick. Okay, feeling good about that. Since I still have cell reception and how am I doing on time? Yep, doing okay. I'm gonna work on some of this just to kind of clean it up and try to finish it. It says I have a weak cell reception, so I'm gonna try to hurry. <laughs> all right um, all I did here was just added a little bit more um, softer tone back in this area I pulled in some darker tones right here and then um, added a few highlights on top of these rocks just some nice little angular pieces to kind of help pull you in and go back that way and um, I think that that's that's kind of about it I'm gonna just show you that real quick and I'm gonna call this a day because it's been kind of a challenge trying to get it all to work. Um, but it's pretty and I hope it was fun and a little bit relaxing. Let me zoom in and show you this real quick. Okay, so that's what I came up with. And um, yeah, I wanted to thank you guys for joining me and I hope you guys all have a fantastic uh, Thanksgiving and enjoy your time with your family. Thank you so much. We'll see you.